I'd like to introduce you to Monty Nicholson, an investigator with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department and author of the Presley Arrangement. Monty Nicholson. Welcome, Monty. Hi, Monty. First question, Monty, do you think there's a remote possibility that Elvis could still be alive? Based on what I've seen so far, I think the possibility is very real. All right. Now, Monty, you're a member in good standing with the law enforcement community, so aren't you a little concerned about what your colleagues might say? Well, of course, I do take some teasing from my peers, but they know that this is something I do outside my career of law enforcement. I just try to do things thorough enough to dispel any real criticism. When I visited with you uh, some weeks ago, we discussed your views on the discrepancies surrounding Elvis's death. The story released to the public said Elvis died in his bathroom and was discovered by his girlfriend, Ginger Alden. Supposedly, the authorities were notified and resuscitation attempts were continued until Elvis's body was removed. Contrary to what one would expect, a house in disarray and emotional upheaval, speculation has it that not only were the bedroom and bathroom cleaned up, but Ginger Alden, prior to the arrival of the authorities, took the time to get dressed and gain her composure. If Elvis died in the morning, how is it possible that he could be getting on a helicopter later that day without being observed? Well, Bill, I'm not sure that he wasn't observed. Why are you not sure of that? In 1977, Monty was contacted by a man who claimed he worked for Elvis. He also claimed to have taken two photos of Elvis boarding a helicopter with government agents after the time of his alleged death. Upon seeing the photos, Monty became intrigued by the possibility that Elvis may have faked his death. He contacted the man with the photos. At first, he denied having them. Then he changed his mind adding, it will cost you to see them again. Monty arranged a meeting with him and went to the address he gave, only to find a vacant house. That man has since disappeared. Inspired by this incident, Monty decided to write the Presley Arrangement, which tells the story of how Elvis may have faked his own death. The Presley Arrangement was published and placed in a major bookstore chain. Strangely enough, soon after the book started to sell, it also started to disappear. Monty continued to research and write about the mystery concerning the death of Elvis. He was contacted by Gail Brewer Giorgio. During his first conversation, he learned that Gail's book, Orion, had also disappeared from the bookstore shelves. Gail and Monty exchanged information for several months. They concluded that their books may have been suppressed by the same people. I don't mean to be callous when I say this, but isn't it possible that the book just didn't sell? Of course, and it's always possible any book wouldn't sell. I called my publicist, and I asked him about this problem. I said, you know, I have friends that are going into the bookstores and asking for my book, and they're being told that they can't even order it. Yet you tell me it's still in the catalog of books in print. He said in 35 years in the publishing business, he'd never heard of such a thing. There were other discrepancies surrounding Elvis's death. First, in March of 1977, before Elvis died, two life insurance policies were cashed in. A secret personal checking account was emptied out shortly before Elvis Presley died. The amount? Close to a million dollars. And perhaps most odd, some claim that the signature on Elvis' death certificate matches Elvis' own handwriting. We asked handwriting analyst Paul Wiest to look at these signatures, and here were his thoughts. I was asked by Gail Gorgio to examine some handwriting of Elvis Presley. She supplied me with a copy of a letter written to President Nixon in 1970 and the death certificate or medical examiner's report at the time of his reported death. I examined these two documents and compared them by measuring the slant of the handwriting, the spacing between the letters, spacing between the words, the size of the letters, and the individual letter formations. I also made transparent photocopies where I could lay one photocopy, a uh, transparent copy on top of another one for close comparison. I examined these under transmitted light with a light table. The result of my examination was that I found that the slant matched on both documents, 
that the size of the letters was the same, the spacing between the letters was the same, and many of the individual letter forms were the same. My conclusions after this exhaustive examination was, and by my professional opinion as a document examiner, that the same person who wrote the letter to President Nixon also wrote the Elvis Presley death certificate or medical examiner's report of Elvis Presley's death. So far, we have addressed the possibility that Elvis might not have passed away when everyone thought he did. Now let's assume for a moment that that's true and that he is alive. It stands to reason that someone somewhere would have encountered him. Gail, why don't you tell us how you became involved in this case? Well, I, I like the rest of the world, heard the news that Elvis Presley died at the age of 42, and I was shocked. When I heard that Elvis Presley had died, I was amazed. It seemed that almost overnight a very mortal man was deified. My curiosity led me to write the novel Orion, a fictitious story about a singer who was a prisoner of his fame a man who ended up hoaxing his own death. The book was sold to a major publisher, a sizable advance was received, as well as a promise of extensive promotion. After the book was released, I began receiving calls that the books were rapidly disappearing under very strange circumstances. More than one store reported that men in business suits came in and purchased the books in quantities, and that once they were gone, the stock was never replenished which is a very strange business practice. My repeated calls to the publisher were ignored, my questions unanswered. Meanwhile, as I was investigating the mysterious disappearance of my book, the media and many of the fan clubs were questioning the death of Elvis Presley. Several fans brought to my attention the fact that Elvis's middle name was misspelled on his grave at Graceland. This and other discrepancies led me to write, Is Elvis Alive? I was then contacted by Monty Nicholson, a veteran investigator with the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, who had written a book called The Presley Arrangement, which focuses on Elvis faking his death. Monty and I compared notes and found that despite never having heard of each other, our information was almost identical. My appearances on radio and television shows led to many phone calls, leads, lots of new information. Now, how many pleas in our audience have been to Graceland. May we see some hands? Ooh, quite a number of you. All right. What would you think if you'd visited Graceland, taken some typical tourist pictures, and then in the privacy of your living room, noticed what seemed to be the face of Elvis Presley staring right out at you? I think you'd get very excited. Well, this is precisely what happened to a man named Mike Joseph on New Year's Eve day, December 31st, 1977. Now, recently, Mike was interviewed about the events leading up to this amazing picture. Let's watch. It was New Year's Eve, 77, when I uh, took my wife and my son and my nephew down to Graceland. They had just opened up uh, Memory Gardens where Elvis was laid to rest. And we were there for an hour and um, we left uh, back for home. Had the pictures developed and uh, looked at them, put them away. One day after reading a book, I decided to look at my pictures again. I, I pulled them out. And this time, I saw something in one of the pictures that I hadn't seen. My God, I had Elvis Presley sitting in the doorway, looking out at the fans walking past the grave. I have had the negatives examined by Kodak. And Kodak uh, basically says that they uh, are original. They have not been tampered with in any way. They were taken in sequence, uncut by the negatives, uh, being original. They can tell the emulsion number of the film was manufactured in 77. Uh, each a roll of film that is manufactured is, has a manufacturing date on it in the emulsion number. This is the shot that I took of the people walking and the, uh, the bathhouse in the uh, distance. We zero in here, and this is the same shot uh, with just the chair. No one sitting in the chair. So that shows it was not a picture of someone sitting in a chair. This is my son once again blocking the doorway. And of course, the picture where I first spotted the, uh, the silhouette in the doorway. How many of you think that Mike Joseph photographed Elvis Presley? May we see some hands? 
Well, perhaps the most convincing piece of evidence that suggests that Elvis may still be alive is the mystery audio tape. Now, let's take a brief listen before we continue. About the, uh, at the time, uh, I had a beard and I lost a few pounds. And I thought it would be, I thought it would be very, very hard for anyone to recognize me. All right, this tape was released to the general public in, in Gail Giorgio's book, Is Elvis Alive? Now, at the time, the origin of the tape was unknown. But since the publication of that book, new information has been uncovered. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to introduce Maria Columbus, the president of the oldest Elvis Presley fan club. <laughs> Hi, Maria. Okay. Now, Maria, will you please tell us about the tape? Okay. I received this tape in 1981 from Steve Chances from Florida. Mm -hmm. He had written a book called Elvis, Where Are You? Now, on this tape, you only hear Elvis speaking. The person he was speaking to was edited out. Yes, I noticed. I noticed that. Huh? Well, part of it was edited out. Why would anyone edit out one of the parts of the conversation? That sounds sort of suspicious to me. Yes, I, it's suspicious to me, too. Um, the only thing I could think of is that the person did not want to be recognized, but I believe it is Elvis speaking. Curiouser and Thank curiouser. You. All right, we brought in an audio analyst to find out if the voice on the tape is, in fact, that of Elvis Presley. Have two years of sobering army life changed your mind about rock and roll? Sobering army life. <laughs> uh, no, it hasn't. It, it hasn't. it hasn't changed my mind because I was in tanks for a long time, you see. And uh, they rock and roll quite a bit. <laughs> I started traveling all over the world. And it's been, uh, it's been enjoyable, but it's, it's been a constant battle of uh, growing beards and and this and that to, to keep from being recognized. Who was recorded during that 1981 phone conversation? Was it Elvis Presley? One way we can find out is to utilize some tools from law enforcement to electronically contrast and compare the voice of the real Elvis Presley and the voice on the tape. L.H. Williams works with a major police department in Texas and is an expert on audio voice prints and here is his report. Gail had sent me a copy of a transcript of the tape recording of the unknown person. And uh, this was four pages long. In this process, I also requested copies of known tape recordings of Elvis Presley. And I followed the guidelines that were established during the Watergate case for uh, possible authentication of the tape recording. I selected the same words and phrases of the known and the unknown person for comparison purposes. This is the known sample of Elvis Presley stating the word music. This is a sample from the unknown tape recording showing the word music. The formats that were formed fall within the same frequency range through here which would indicate a match. Basically the known voice of Elvis Presley compared with the voice on this tape is the same. Now let's assume for a second that this test conclusively proves that Elvis made this recording. Can we be sure that it was made after 1977? We've made a transcription of the recording and we've marked down specific things that the caller said. If any one of these comments describes events that happened after Elvis's alleged death, then the argument that he might still be alive is stronger.